Bronx, my whole life, like South Bronx, my parents did separate like towards high school. So I think it was just like, okay, so my dad's out here doing whatever he wants to do. And my mom's not exactly the best listener. I experienced a lot of emotional abuse that pushed me into like the state I was during that time. That's when I was like officially diagnosed with depression. I did struggle with self-harm a lot. It was one of the ways that I thought was like helping me because the feelings would just build up and I just, the disassociation would feel so strong that that was kind of the only way I felt rooted is, is if I felt something that wasn't like just this numb feeling that I was constantly feeling. I think that's also why I threw myself into my art a lot more seriously when I got into high school because it filled in like that missing piece that I was having like since my parents had separated. The scars afterwards made it really hard to like accept myself and like myself and I think that kept me in that hole. Around that time was also like when I started to go to Margaret's place. I didn't even really know what Margaret's place was. I just thought it was like another counseling thing. When I walked in, there were like really big couches and I'm like, that's weird. That's not something you normally see at school. And there were like games everywhere and posters on the wall. And there were a bunch of kids in there just drawing, playing Uno. It really feels like you're not at school anymore, like you're in like a truly safe space. It was around that time where I started taking like my drawing a lot more seriously and I got more into like character designing and creating like my own little worlds where like things were like a lot better. I do eventually want to write like my own longer, definitely longer graphic novel, like a little story of like where my life had been to where I am now to show people that oh, you're not alone. Other people are going through this as well. It's okay to talk about it. I think I might have just been doing art more for like personal reasons rather than wanting to share it with others. I think Margaret's Place made me realize that, hey, this is something that I have that I can make a difference in other people's lives with like what I do. This year I helped do the domestic violence campaign posters and the theme is superheroes. Their names are Speak Up and Listen. And like they'll go around like teaching people about domestic violence. I thought it was really cool to get to like create characters this year that represent what the whole campaign's about. Like so many people are dealing with some type of domestic violence, but we just don't always know because not everyone's educated about it. I am an alumni intern at Postos right now. I love working with the peer leaders because you have some freshmen, you have some seniors, people in different friend groups all coming together and the fact that they can learn from each other's experiences and like different like ethnic backgrounds and like what's going on in their home versus what's going on in someone else's home. So many people might be dealing with mental health, but not everybody has a word for it. And what Safe at Home offers is a chance to learn about what you might be going through and what others might be going through and how to help yourself and others. Normally when people think of superheroes, they think of people with really big flashy powers who like save cities, but I feel like what makes like a good superhero is someone who just wants to help other people. Even little things like just sitting there to listen to someone, asking about someone's day, or speaking out against something that you don't think is right, I think those are like the basics of a superhero. I'm Jalissa, and I'm a safe at home superhero.